Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that with your church throughout the world, throughout, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, stricken excuse me, and struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded by, for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there is no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain when you could make, excuse me, when you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him will the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many, just, many righteous, and he shall bear many, excuse me, I'm messed up. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered by the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 91. We'll read verses 9 through 16 responsively by whole verse. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies, and my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like the cedars of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. 
He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory be to you, Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Abide in me, O Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. My sister-in-law has been teaching pre-K over in Duncan for, I guess, close to 20 years, if not maybe a little more. And one of the stories that has always stuck with me that I have heard her describe how they sort of teach and... uh, 
uh, imbue some sense of order in the pre-K pre classroom, there are many uh, strategies, and somehow she, among other teachers, can make these things happen. I remember one of the earlier stories she told me, I think that would probably be in her more, I was surprised by this when I started teaching, is that the children, the kiddos, did not know how to stand in a straight line. And so I remember her telling this story more than once and just being astounded one day when she said the first day she got there to teach, okay, all right, class, go and stand in a straight line by the door. And chaos ensued. She solved that as she has solved many other challenges along the way. And she put a piece of duct tape in the middle of the door and it stretched back to the end halfway probably across, across the classroom or so, and she told them, okay class, I need you to go find a place and stand on this piece of tape, and I want you all to turn this way. So with some practice, that's how they learned to stand in a line together. That one stuck with me, that story, because it was different than my experience of standing in line. I don't remember learning to stand in line in grade school. What I do remember is the jostling of getting to the front of the line in first grade or so. And some of you teachers are sort of nodding your head. Somewhere between pre-K and first grade, it seemed to be for me, it, it, it was not a peaceful sort of standing around, looking around, oh, you want me to do this, and sort of talking to my friend or this, that, or the other. Somewhere along the way, there got to be, it was a race, and the most coveted, important place to be anytime, anywhere you were asked to line up in first grade was at the front of the line. It didn't matter if you were in the classroom or if you were out on the playground or whatever it was. It was just the thing that it became. And I'm sure some of you are nodding, going, yes, I, I understand, and I have memories of this as well. Being first. And there's an element, as I was listening to our gospel today, about James and John. Where do you think they may want to have been in the line as it were being formed in my first grade classroom, based upon what their request was today? The front of the line, the right, and the left first. And what is incredible and yet not, just as incredible and yet not as somehow we go from learning to line up on the duct tape in pre-K to fighting for the first place in line come first grade, is that human instinct somewhere in there that sort of gets kicked in even though we have been taught many a thing differently along the way as well. Just like the disciples, literally, we could go back and look at our re readings on our gospel lessons the past few weeks, have been about the first and the last, and the last shall be first, and all of those sorts of teachings of Jesus, literally just in the verses before, that presumably James and John, in theory, were to be, or probably heard, Right? You would think if they were paying attention. Um, maybe they weren't paying attention. But their fellow disciples felt like they should have been paying attention because they were rather irritated. We were told that they were angry. Because I think they had been listening. And Jesus, I love how Jesus does this. He doesn't really tell James and John, this isn't going to work. This is not how you line up. <laughs> I've given you guidance, but you want to do it this way. Okay, go try it your own way. And he goes over here and just continues to teach and remind the ten disciples, I think this is how my kingdom works. In fact, I know this is how the kingdom works. And the first shall be last, and the servant, slave, what we just heard read at the end of our gospel now. But it is not... So among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the slave of all. That's been a consistent theme the past few weeks. And it seems as if it's a struggle. I know it is for me. 
and I can identify with James and John in their question and in their desire to where they want to be. And also certainly with the disciples scratching their heads, putting it politely in their frustration, right? Because Jesus has been telling them, this is how my kingdom works. This is how the exact opposite of Roman occupation and being oppressed and being, as he says at the other part of the gospel, that you are among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. Jesus is saying, that is not how it's going to be in my kingdom. And we're getting glimpses of it in the here and the now. Because in Jesus' kingdom, or God's kingdom, grace can open any door, right? There's not a limit in our human understanding of what can be possible in God when we can be first and last and servant and slave and how all of those pieces fit together don't together, right? And I hope when we hear this gospel that we can hold on to that possibility, right? It's hard to hold on to that possibility because as we're lining up at that door, somewhere along the way we learn that maybe there's not enough or, well, there's only one place and that's the most desirable place and nothing in, of the kids behind me who are behind me in line, nothing else good is going to happen for them. Only thing good can happen to the one who is there first and gets there first. And so we start to be shaped by this scarcity, by these limits as we perceive them from a small, small age. And Jesus is constantly trying to help us open new possibilities. That's why I say that God's grace, there isn't anywhere it can't go and any door that it can't get through. In fact, I think a more apt image would be to think about that line of tape that is in the classroom and you're told to go and line up there, except you look around and there's a door on each wall. And there's not just one door. Maybe there's multiple doors on each wall. That changes my perception. Perhaps it changes your perception as well. As this economy, this way of living and being and moving in God's world, it doesn't operate like ours. There's no need to try to run to get to the front because there are plenty of places to go, and all of them will be wonderful. It's my hope that we together can catch glimmers of the possibility that there may not just be one way. There could be a lot of ways, and they could all be equally beautiful. And you could go out through one door and intersect with the path of someone else and something completely different, surprising, and new can emerge even then. I think that's also what Jesus is trying to say when the first shall be last and the servant shall be slave, is get ready to be surprised. This isn't going to come together like I would typically think or like you might typically imagine. So may we trust in that, may we be open to that, may we endeavor to find glimmers and glimpses of what is possible when we recognize and remember oh, there's not just one door, there's not just one window, there are lots of paths. And may we discover those together and may they lead us to the building up of God's kingdom in the here and now as we make our way to that true eternal home, which will be like nothing else we could ever have asked for or imagined. Amen.
please rise as we reaffirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Butch, Cody, Colleen, the Cox family, Craig, Dave, David, David M, Debbie L, Ellen, Emily, Heather, Helen, Jean, Jeremy, the Lees family, Leo, Lisa, Lucille, Martha, Noor, Rita, R.L., Riker, Scott, Sherry, Terry, and all victims of Hurricane Helene and Milton. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for birthdays for Vicki Campbell and Elena Leon. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, 
In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God be always with you, and also with you. Good morning, good morning, please be seated. Welcome, it's wonderful to have you all with us this morning. Uh, the announcements that we have, the main one is, if you didn't see it in the newsletter, goodness, where have I gone and, ah, oh, it was there, thank you. Uh, are there um, in the back. Our vestry is meeting uh, after church today, so if you're a vestry member, please uh, do stick around, and we'll start that uh, promptly at 11.30. We can start earlier if everyone is back there earlier as well, so I'll just put that plug in there. Um, the other thing that I would uh, just remind you all that, I, as I mentioned, was in the newsletter, if, if you have seen that, and you'll see it on Facebook as well. November the 3rd is our uh, celebration of All Saints and All Souls, and as, as become a custom, uh, at least the past few years, uh, to bring pictures of your beloved who have passed before you, uh, and we will celebrate them, and in fact, there'll be a moment where we can um, surround our altar with pictures and images of those of our beloved who have gone before us. And I, just as a reminder, that's a visual representation of what is already a reality every Sunday. But in particular, on All Saints, All Souls, sometimes it's nice to remind ourselves just so that we don't forget. There's something very powerful about seeing that cloud of witnesses that are around the altar in visible form that Sunday. But it's true each and every time we gather for communion uh, and gather at these rails. So um, hopefully you can take comfort in that. I think... That's uh, just a big thank you to everyone who helped last week with uh, yes. moving chairs and tables. Thank and you. Yes. Couldn't have done it without you. Yes. <laughs> a lot of many people pitched in to help make that happen. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I did just get the link back a few, well, on Friday, actually, uh, from the photographer. So you will soon see some pictures that will come out. And there are some lovely ones that were taken and uh, the videography will be edited and put together uh, early this week as well. Um, Troy Antonio will be, or Trey Antonio will be back uh, next week as well to gather more uh, videos and in, um, uh, visual representation of what our worship looks like and who our community is that then we'll be making available for you all to share via social media uh, so that you have some more tools to talk about what this place is to you and uh, why you call it your spiritual home. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, so um, let us ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts. Please rise. <laughs>
all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing, all you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. stand, sit, or kneel. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ, and grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Heaven, body of Christ, bread of heaven.
Continuing together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May it be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.